of the Parish Community Park in District 1, and the substantial expansion of this premier sports complex. Notably, our forthcoming vision, a Veterans Memorial Park in Veterans Village, will stand as a tribute to deep gratitude we hold for those who have sacrificed so much for our great country. Here's to more goals, more touchdowns, and more smiles right here in the premier place to live, work, and play. From increasing the pay for those who keep us safe, to a new site for the Mantee County Sheriff's Office Aviation Unit, additional substations, and a new fleet facility, our commitment to your safety is unmatched. But there's more that we can do. We are working with the Mantee County Sheriff's Office and local businesses to illuminate underlit neighborhoods with Light Up Manatee and leveraging AI traffic preemption technology with our own Public Works Department to dramatically improve EMS response times from bolstering law enforcement, implementing advanced technology countywide, to fostering safer neighborhoods on a localized level. Manatee County and the Board of County Commissioners are committed to a vision that is focused on your well-being. As our county continues to grow and evolve, the heart of our urban core holds immense potential for progress and prosperity. That's why we're prioritizing and expediting requests for affordable housing development and taking action to identify opportunities for enhancing neighborhoods and business districts. As part of this initiative, we're collaborating with the Manatee County Sheriff's Department, the City of Bradenton, and the Police Athletic League to provide support for improving the area around LECOM. This expansion will not only bring extra lit, publicly accessible ball diamonds and parking, but also significantly boost the local economy and transform the neighborhood by directly benefiting underprivileged youth in the area. The Manatee County Utilities Department does way more than manage the distribution of clean drinking water. Reliable utilities can attract businesses and industries to our area, contributing to economic growth and job creation. Not only is Manatee County continuing to expand services for our taxpayers, with the addition of 75 new lift stations over the next five years, but we're also looking to improve it. We're in the process of constructing Florida's largest low-pressure membrane filtration facility at our Lake Manatee water treatment plant, which will result in consistent water quality. And our spillway replacement project will ensure improved dam safety, enhanced flood management, and increase resilience for anything that Mother Nature throws our way. Thank you for giving us the chance to provide you with a clear vision for our beautiful county. Please feel free to email any of the commissioners featured in this video by going to mymanatee.org vision. From our award-winning beaches to the expansion of our convention center, it's with your support that we'll continue to make Manatee County the premier place to live, work, and play.
one of them I have to resolve. Good morning. I'd like to bring this meeting to order. I don't know yet. How do I get into this? I just can't. I'd like to welcome everyone to the rescheduled meeting for January 26, 2024. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> If everyone can please take a moment and silence your phones, it would be appreciated. Ms. Um, Greer and Ms. Shank, any updates to the agenda from the county attorney's office or from the engineer? No, Mr. Chairman. No, sir. Okay. We have had the December 14th, 2023 meet, minutes for approval. So this is my first time after 22 years of dealing with this electronically. So there's going to be a little bit of figuring this stuff out. But let's see. we have a motion and we have a second. We can vote now. Can everybody hear me in the back OK? OK, thanks. <clears throat> Motion passes for the minutes, four to nothing. Thank you. Now is the time when we open the public uh, comment up to items for future agenda items, not for anything on today's agenda, but in case anyone in the public would like to have something seen at the Planning Commission and any future items. So any future agenda items at this time? Seeing no one come forward, we'll close that portion of the hearing. Now, we go right into, um, we have presentations upon a request. Number one is a Pace Center for Girls, and I believe we'll have staff read it into the record. Yes, sir. PDO 2341ZP, Pace Centers for Girls, Bradenton. Um, it's quasi-judicial, and Kevin Oatman is here from staff to um, answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. Um, is the applicant represented this morning? Okay, would you like to come forward and make a brief presentation? Mr. Chair, we have to disclose ex party communications. I'm t I'm, I was gonna do that after, but that's okay. So has anyone, anyone here at the board has had any ex parte communication on this project? No. no. And I'm sorry, it'll be Rosina for staff today. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. Hurry back there. Are these? Thank you. Would the applicant, would the applicant care to make a brief introductory? This is on presentation on request. Good morning, commissioners. Stephen, I'm sorry. Caleb, is that better? No, you need to swear people in. Oh, we haven't sworn anyone in. See, after 22 years, I forgot. <laughs> Would, would everyone, anyone thinking about talking today, please rise and get sworn in. Even if you're remotely thinking you might get speak the move to speak, please rise and get sworn in. Thanks, Caleb. Name county residents. All right, thank you. Stephen Reese, law firm of Vicard Merrill. I'm a resident of Manti County, and I'm here on behalf of Pace. Um, and you have been sworn. I have been sworn. Uh, we have a presentation if, uh, if the commission would so choose, uh, but otherwise we're here for answer any questions. Any questions from the board for the applicant? Yes, sir. Okay, staff, any questions? Any closed staff presentation at all? Good morning, Rosina Leider, represented the staff, and it has been sworn. We agree with all the statements that is in the staff report, and we don't have any concerns about this project. If any you have questions, any questions or comments we are here to answer the questions. Any questions or comments for staff? Okay, we'll open the public hearing on this item. If anyone would like to come forward and speak for or against this item, anyone would like to come forward, please come forward, state your name, county residence, and whether or not you've been sworn. Uh, Brian Wilson. Uh, Manatee County resident. I live at 2611 on 35th Street. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I have misworn. Um, we don't really oppose the rezoning, but the fact that the most western lot is a residential lot. The road is only 16 inches or 16 feet wide. It's not a standard sized road. Trash trucks and vehicles coming up the road have to move over into the people's lawns. The road's not designed to hold up to 250 cars coming in there in the morning. Uh, their president entrance is on 26th Street. Now they want to come up 35th Street. Their traffic study is on 26th Street, not going up 36th Street, which or 35th Street, I'd rather, sorry. Um, and that's where their new proposed road is to come up 35th Street into the parking lot and then around and out 36th Street. So I would ask that a new traffic study be done and not have an entrance on 35th Street. You keep the entrance on 26th Street. Okay. Uh, there's a, at the beginning of the road, there's a fire hydrant. Um, and if people are pulling in and out, there's no, there's no room for two cars to get through there. Um, it's, just a, it's an old 1960s road. It's not designed to, to take that kind of traffic. I have pictures and so if you want to see that. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the public coming forward to speak for or against this item? Hi, my name is Dawn Plavak. I'm Manatee County resident. I'm at 2615 35th Avenue West. Um, I have so been sworn. Um, as with Brian, I just wanted to mention our road because of its size. I've now lived at my home that I purchased uh, four years ago in January. My mailbox has been taken out three times. Uh, just last week, I picked up somebody's side mirror in my lawn. So it's because our road is about the width of one and a half cars. Two cars cannot go down our road side by side. And with this proposed entrance on 35th Avenue West, that is going to bottleneck everything because it looks like it's coming off at 26, turning onto 35th Avenue West in an immediate turn into their new proposed entrance. If there was a turn lane that they created of their own property, that would alleviate that. But they currently have an entrance on 36th Avenue West, which is a two lane road. So that's where the residents in our area, right at that entrance way, is requesting that they continue to use their current entrance off of 36th Avenue West and 26th Street, because that road is wider than our current road. Unless they want to work with the county to widen our road and give us sidewalks and give us culverts, we'd be more than happy for that. <laughs> but that's not likely to happen. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else in the public would like to come forward to speak for or against this item? <coughs> yes, my name is Larry Moss. I'm a Benton County resident. My address is 2610 35th Avenue West. And the same thing as everybody else. And you've been sworn? Oh, yeah, I've been sworn in. The same as everybody else. The road's just, you know, that road's just not accommodating enough for traffic like that to come down through there and it's going to back up into 26th street and it's going to be a, a hazard because once once the traffic turns on to 20 35th street you only got like 50 feet before you got to turn into the driveway to go into the pace and it just ain't going to they're going to be out in the middle of 26th street blocking traffic and causing accidents and and there's and other than that, there's a lot of children on the street, and with that street being that narrow, and all the traffic it's going to create, it's just going to be a disaster. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? For or against? Please come forward, state your name, and whether or not you've been sworn. By the way, as, as just we're not looking at you, but that's because today everything's on our computers in front of us. So the fact yes. that we're staring down here is not that we're not listening to you. But. My name is Rosalia Mendeleev, and I'm, I am resident of 2606 West 35th um, Avenue West. And my husband, he is 82 years old. Sworn? 
and he has a lot of uh, problem with his health and we moved just two years ago for quite a nice peaceful life in Florida. We really enjoy it. Everything is good. But the street is really very narrow. If something happened with my husband, it's not able to go to. I. Uh, my English not so good. One more. Of course, I'm sorry. Tell true everything. And uh, it's not able to come. If something happened at fire department, a street it's really narrow. It's uh, impossible to, and we just, it's first house from the corner, almost uh, next to gate. And I think this is the best way when it's exit and coming in to way from 36th Street, it's more wider street, and just make solid fence on 35th Street. It will be really, really convenient for all people who live in our street, in our avenue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, anyone else in the public? I'd like to come forward and speak for or against this item. Anyone else? Seeing no one come forward, we'll close the public hearing. Staff closing comments? I'm sorry? Did, did you want to come forward? Yeah, I want to come forward. Is there anyone else? Come on down. So that we, Anybody else want to talk? So we know you're... Please state your name, many county residents, or whether or not you've been sworn. Hi, uh, my name is Kidani Trinidad. Uh, I'm a uh, resident at uh, Street uh, 26, uh, 34, 24, 26 Street. My property is actually the corner uh, property um, right across where uh, this development is to take place. Uh, my dad is actually the homeowner at the resident. Um, we've been there. Uh, for a, few, a couple of years now before the, the old property got torn away and this new development is trying to take place. Um, just like everybody stated prior to me, uh, this street, 35th Avenue, which is my the, the, the corner property right there, that street is a very narrow street. Uh, I've myself witnessed multiple car accidents right in the corner of my property, being that there's a fire hydrant right in the corner of the, of the, uh, of the property entrance which makes the property turn even narrower. So people sometimes when there's a car right at the exit going towards 26th Street, they have to basically almost go right into the grass in order because when the other cars are turning, especially a lot of cars like uh, Amazon trucks, uh, people with uh, landscape businesses with trailers, utility trailers, when they're taking that turn, there's literally like no place for them to turn. So uh, mailbox person by themselves, uh, even ran into uh, a side of my property uh, sewer, uh, where they, you know, where the sewer drains as well. Um, I don't, I don't. I think this this plan um, needs to be reconsidered, being that uh, there is other entries uh, possible for this school. Um, I believe the the old school entrance was on 26th Street, and they had another exit on 35th Avenue, on the 36th Avenue, uh, 36th Avenue across the street. Uh, which actually my sister resides at on that other corner property, uh, has a wider uh, capacity for multiple vehicles to be on both sides of the road and a car to be able to go through it. On this other property, the minute there's a line right against 26th Street, not only is it unable for any other car to go through there, but there's also a big safety hazard of anybody that's at that stop sign, being that they have no way to see they're gonna cut a lot of the, the viewage as far as where they can turn, especially if somebody's trying to get through the school from 26th Street to turn right into that entrance on 35th, and then you know, just to try to back up traffic right there. It's just a basically a, 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 a disaster waiting to happen. Um, so I, I just wanted to give my opinion and uh, uh, opposed to that um, entrance on there. Just because like I said, I think there's definitely a, uh, there should be definitely way better alternatives, either being 26th uh, Street, which has two lanes on each side, and I'm sure they can, you know, have a, one of the lanes for that time frame, hold traffic and be a lot safer, or 35th Avenue, where it has a wider, um, has a wider lane uh, where people can park and their cars can still go through. Again, on 35th Avenue, being that this, this older residence and that old, though, sorry. That's all right. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. 
Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in the public that would like to come forward to speak for or against this item? We'll be closing the public hearing this time. Anyone else? We'll close the public hearing. Um, <clears throat> I do have a question for the applicant. Could you clarify why we're having that, um, that entrance that everyone has a problem with on 35th? Yeah, if I could get the overhead. Again, Stephen Reese with Law Firm Vicard Merrill on behalf of Pace. So currently there is an access off of 26 uh, and an access off of 36. The current design now, as before you today, would have a single direction coming off of 35th, mainly for drop off in the morning and queuing on site. So actually addressing the, the concern of queuing into 35th Avenue, this has the capacity to take the queuing on site. The majority of the entrance and daily visitors would still access via 36 and the additional parking on site. Uh, your professional staff and transportation did not raise any concerns. In fact, it's you know, encouraged to take those access points off 26th Street. So be happy to address any other questions you all may have. So that's for drop off in the morning and pick up at night or just drop off? Or if I may, I've got uh, Amy Wick Mavis on behalf of Pace who can describe the daily act operations. Good morning. I'm Amy Wick Mavis. I'm the executive director of Pace Center for Girls. I live um, 34, <laughs> 34211. Um, and yes, I've been sworn in. Thank you so much. So, our access route, we put the queuing on our property so that that would not be an issue, so that the cars can come in. Our daily operations, we serve about 59 girls, um, many of whom take the bus transportation and are not dropped off but get in the bus. Um, and so, the drop off will come. We start at 8 o'clock in the morning and we're done around 2 o'clock, 2.15 in the afternoon. But we have rearranged all of the site plans so that our cars can stay on site on our property and then just turn and not back up onto 26th Street. We have been at that property since 1996. Um, and as we know, there are many accidents that happen on 26th Street. We've never had an accident happen um, on our side entrance at all in the whole time we've been there. Okay, what time in the morning is drop-off? Uh, drop-off happens usually between about 7.45 and 8.15 in the morning. Okay, so it's roughly a half-hour window. It doesn't keep going on all day long? No, I mean, we have visitors as anyone else would. It's right. the parking lot, not the drop-off if they come after that. Correct, and, and we're Monday through Friday. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> Staff, closing comments, if any? Good morning, good morning, Commissioners Nelson Galeano, Transportation Planning Staff. I have been served. Um, this, the traffic study that has been submitted is a traffic impact statement for a reason. Um, this uh, traffic study, say, is a high level uh, in terms of planning. It means uh, the purpose of this study is to evaluate the suitability of the roadway network to support this development on the worst case scenario. The, we analyze essentially the thoroughfare um, roadway network. Uh, in other words, uh, we consider essentially what is going on on 26th Street. Tw 20, 35 and 36 are local roads. The access, the accesses will be eva evaluated at the final site plan stage. Uh, it will be considered safety and operational conditions at each access. Uh, the width of the roadway needs to be evaluated when the final site plan comes into intuition and we analyze the uh, information that we will provide for the applicant. And we agree the, it is better not to have an access on 26 due to the speed and traffic value that uh, this road uh, has. Okay, are you asking for any additional right away on 35th? Not yet. And it means so when the final site plan comes, I believe we need to analyze this condition. You can't ask for right away. Right, right now, right now, right now, uh, I believe uh, um, this is part of the analysis, the operational analysis on accesses. If they need to have two accesses, um, one south and one north, uh, perhaps the need of uh, or more right away um, will be an issue. But right now, we are not able to, 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 to define if yes or not, essentially because we don't have any right. access so analysis. If we don't ask for it right away now, you're not going to get it at the final site plan level. That ship will have sailed. 
Chairman, but no, no. If they need additional right of way to provide a turn lane that is required for their development, then they would have to give that right of way. Okay. At that time. Okay. This just allows them to develop the site plan. Yeah. The site plan. Okay. So the takeaway of that is um, just for um, the public, they haven't studied it deep enough to know if they're going to have to widen that road out a little bit. The next step is the final site plan. At the final site plan level, staff will take a deeper look at it. If that, if that throat needs to be widened, then the applicant will have to comply with that. Correct. Okay. All right. Anything else from staff? Any questions for staff? Applicant closing comments. Again, Stephen Reese for the record. Uh, no closing comment other than you know, before you as a LDC compliant rezoning. Uh, it's consistent with your land use plan, your comprehensive plan. Uh, there's competent substantial evidence before you and in the staff report as part of the record today to support the decision. And we just ask for your approval. Thank you very much. I have a quick question. The, sure. the one side of the parking lot does not appear to have a landscape island. And I think it's every nine spaces or something like that. And I'm just curious if it. Well, I can. If Ms. I've Harris got to do it. Come down. We, to we do it. have our engineer here today. I, <laughs> if necessary. Otherwise, it is another element that will be discussed during final site plan if there's a discrepancy in the code requirements. Okay. As long as we're approving this. Chairman Kara with Environmental uh, Planning can answer that question for you. Good morning. Kara Koenig, Environmental Planning Section Manager. So there was an LDC text amendment. I believe I approved, was approved around the summer, which now allows up to 15 parking spaces. Oh, okay. All right. Good enough. Thank you. All right. Anything else? One, one other question. Is, is this the, ma the minimum amount of parking required or the maximum? Or? We're going to have our engineer, Chelsea Harrity, speak to that. Hi. My name is Chelsea Harrity. I'm a civil engineer with Pannonia Associates. I'm a resident of Pinellas County, and I have been sworn in. Um, so according to the code, there really isn't um, a minimum parking for schools, but the minimum is the number of staff, which um, right now is 21, um, possible plans to increase to, 20, uh, to 26, and um, kind of based on the use, and there's 36 spaces available now, and that's um, sufficient for their needs. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, anything else for staff or the applicant? I guess could we go up, if it does pass, what would be the next steps for the residents to know that 35th will be handled? It won't come up above a public meeting again, I don't think. No. It will not. Right. FSP is all administrative. <clears throat> right. I mean, can, they, can, the, can the residents who are here be notified when the FSP comes through? Can they meet with the staff. representative? Look, Pace, everyone knows. Pace, they're here. So I, I would expect Pace to contact those people in the back. Yeah, I just spoke with Ms. Wick, 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 Wick Mavis. <laughs> That's a tongue twister on a Friday morning. Uh, of course, we'll continue to work with the neighbors and let them keep them apprised of the final site plan since it is an administrative process and work through their concerns. So when this meeting's over, um, you three can get with that guy and take him behind the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Chair, Chair will entertain a motion. We have a motion and a second. Go ahead and vote. Motion passes yes unanimously. Thank you. Item number two. I don't know if staff could read that into the record. <clears throat> Item number two, ZL2324, Solid Rock Construction Rezone. Solid Rock Construction Group LLC is the owner. It's quasi-judicial, and Rosina Leiter is here for staff. It's a rezone of approximately 0.52 acres generally located on the south side of Cortez Road and west of Paradise Bay Mobile Home Park. 
right. Any planning commissioners have any ex parte communications to reveal? No, sir. No. Great. Applicant, are your representatives so? Please come forward and brief introduction. This is on uh, presentation on request. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Planning Commissioners. For the record, my name is Bob Schmidt with Land Planning Associates, and I have been sworn. Um, this is a very straightforward, small rezone from PRS to PRM. So nothing's changing in terms of the potential uses. Uh, it was rezoned in 2001 to PRS from RSF 4.5, and um, I don't know why they didn't ask for PRM back then, but you're limited to 3,000 square feet in PRS, and there's actually the site can accommodate up to about 7,900 square feet. So that's what the applicant is. It's a different owner now. That's what we're asking for. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. OK, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? No, sir. Staff comments. Good morning, Rosina Leider, by the staff, and it has been thrown. The increase in area that they can have is more or less 4,000 square feet. We consider that this increase in area from the PRS to PRM is not created any uh, additional impacts in anything. Uh, the applicant uh, agreed to the schedule of uses in which we limit all the uses that are not allowed with the coastal planning area and also with the uses that doesn't meet commercial criteria because this specific site doesn't meet commercial criteria and we remove all the retail uses and only leave the office uses and other uses that are not required meet commissioner criteria. And in terms of transportation, don't going to be a big um, impact, the increase. The maximum flood area ratio is 0 0.35, but the site is really small. And this is the maximum they can have, 7,900 square feet of building. OK, thank you. Have Any it? questions for staff? Yes, sir. All right, we'll open the public hearing on this item. Is there anyone in the public that would like to come forward and speak for or against this item? Anyone in the public that would like to come forward and speak for or against this item? We'll close the public hearing. Staff closing comments? No, no, I'd be staff. Applicant closing comments? I assume this is going to be probably a write-in, write-out kind of thing. You're not going to be looking for a cut, and if you do, you'll deal with the county and figure it out. It's a state road, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe there's a median there now. Yes. When I went out to post a sign, I couldn't. I know that they could, you know, they can, I guess they, they can ask for it, but I think it's right in, right out. That's how I had to post a right. sign was right in, right out. Anything else, Mr. Schmidt? Nothing? No, thank you. All right. Chair, I'll entertain a motion. Looks like we have a motion and a second mm -hmm. to approve. All those in favor of approving, vote. Motion carries unanimously to approve for nothing. Thank you. Next item is public hearings. Number three, if staff would read number three into the record. Item number three, PDMU 1616GR2, Parish Lakes General Development Plan Amendment. It's quasi-judicial. Laura Gonzalez is the planner and is here for staff. It's amending the ordinance to approve a land use exchange and revised general development plan. All right, is the applicant represented? Please come forward, state your name, county residence, whether or not you've been sworn, and um, Great. we look forward uh, to your good presentation. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, can I have the overhead? And my name is Clint Cuffel with uh, WRA Engineering, and I have been sworn, uh, 7978 Cooper Creek Boulevard. Um, like you said, it's not the PowerPoint, it's actually the overhead. Perfect, okay. So this is the Parish Lakes DRI. It's an old standing DRI. Um, we've started construction on the northern half of the project um, within the last three years. You actually can see by the aerial, the northern half is fully under construction. Um, as part of the DRI, actually, uh, let's give you a location. It's, it's on the south side of Max and Wallow Road. Um, Carter Road, actually, we've extended it halfway through the project so far. Um, it's just off I-75, uh, just east of I-75. Um, we're here today because, you know, the, in the DRI, we have maximum and minimum development totals, um, and you can tr trade off some of these land uses in, in a land use uh, ex uh, exchange. Um, so in the summary, we, we went through um, from a traffic standpoint and are proposing some uh, land use exchanges, and I'll kind of go through those. There's, there's four or five of them. One is uh, we're going to increase, we're uh, proposing to increase the total residential units uh, from 3,300 the 3,401, so that's a 101 increase of residential. 
We're also going to, we're proposing to uh, the residential uh, mix of density uh, reduced the multifamily from, from uh, 1,100 to 400, and then also then that would increase the single family uh, de detached from 2,200 to 3,001. So what we're doing is we're trading off multifamily residential for single family residential, and then the total residential is only 101 increase. Uh, but I'll go through the commercial. We're proposing to reduce the commercial from 400,000 to 260,000 square feet, reduce the office from 50,000 to 35,000 square feet. Um, and that's kind of the big land use uh, exchanges that we're proposing today. There's a couple, there, there's there are also some minor, you know, North, North Central overlay is no longer in existence. So we're cleaning up the ordinance, um, taking out some of those standards for North Central overlay. Um, there is one more height uh, adjustment we're proposing and that's commercial was limited to two stories and we're proposing to, to limit that now to three stories. You know, some of the commercial uses, um, now you get to the three story, three story mark. Um, that's really the extent of the proposal. It's, it's all approved as during the DRI. Uh, again, we just have to do this GDP amendment to document any land use changes that's approved through the DRI. Um, so this is G GDP amendment kind of memorializes that. We're here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Any questions for the, any questions for the applicant at this point? <clears throat> um, where are you? Where are you reducing the buffer from 50 to 30 feet? So, as part of the North Central overlay, the the the, the buffer was required to be 50 feet along Moxawallo Road and along Carter Road through the middle of our site. Um, Okay. And then so it was a function over of the overlay district that made it 50. Got rid of the overlay district, so we don't need it to be 50 anymore. It can be 30. That's correct. All right. And we've actually, to be honest, we've actually already built the 50 foot on the first part of Carter Road. Um, it's already Street. under construction. It's already built. Um, it's just when we go to the future phases, if the NCO is not there, um, we clean that up, and, and 30 foot's required. You have a land use equivalency matrix for traffic that that addresses these changes. Yeah, there's a very yeah, it's in the DRI, the land use equivalency uh, matrix about trading trips and everything, and that's why we got to these numbers. Right, um, is all it won't require another traffic study or anything because they're just trading off development. Is that generally that's correct. correct? That's correct. It's the the CLS that still remains intact is not violated by these uh, exchanges. Okay. All right. Any questions for the applicant? I have just one quick one. Um, just the, is it mostly market conditions that you're making the exchanges, especially the multifamily and single family? Because it's yeah, ex exactly. It's in this, you know, this part of Mancy County, you know, single family detached is really the drive in this market. Uh, there's a little, there's some some multifamily out here, but mainly the the single family. It's market driven by, you know, the single family detached market in this in this area. Okay, and also the reduction in office and all. And commercial, um, yeah, the the commercial node. And we do have, you know, it's still 260,000 square feet of commercial. is still a pretty uh, heavy size of commercial. So we've the corner, these two corners up here on the uh, Carter Road and Moxon is really where that commercial node will be. Um, we started construction on that already, and you know, 400,000 was 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 more than we needed. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I would just, I just think for the record, if the applicant could address the buffer on other thoroughfare roads that are on the property also, such as Sawgrass okay. and Road EE, to ensure that um, the buffer is being changed on those also. Okay. Yeah, so we have um, Sawgrass is right now being constructed um, just off our property to the east. We then pick it up, take it across Buffalo Canal, and take it into Erie Road. And I, I have a... Yeah, there's a GDP somewhere. Yeah, there's GDP. I'll pull up the GDP. It's easier to see. Okay. So those buffers, again, those were similar, 50 foot previously. Um, okay, there you can see that better. So this is sawgrass. Comes, we, we meet up with it at Summer Woods, and we take it down to Erie. That's also going from, you know, the buffer on that was from, was 50 feet for the NCO. And now we're proposing 30 feet because NCO is no longer uh, in existence. And then Carter Road is actually already constructed to here um, from from Moccasin Wallow. We've actually kept, um, we've built the 50 foot uh, buffer there already. And then from down to here, we've proposing the 30 foot. And then Road EE is 
connects Sawgrass um, to Carter Road. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. DeLisland, <coughs> you had a question? Or yes, no? sir. Well, I thought you had a question. Any, any other questions for the applicant? All right, staff presentation. Hi, good morning. This is Laura Gonzalez, and I have been sworn. Um, okay. I agree with the applicant presentation, so I will only highlight the most relevant aspects of this proposal. Um, the request is for a GDP amendment. This is the second GDP amendment for the parish DRI, uh, mixed development use uh, the, the development that was approved in 2017. Uh, the applicant is proposing to change the balance of the current entitlements using the land use equivalency matrix, and I will over this shortly, as well as the other minor changes or other changes that, that the applicant has explained, the removal of the north central overlay, the increase of the maximum height of commercial commercial buildings, the reduction in the landscape buffers, and some uh, changes in the access points. This is the future land use category is the mixed use and um, PSP1 uh, that correspond to a FPL easement. Uh, the zoning is PDMU. Um, this is the um, original um, GDP that was approved uh, in 2017 with a total of 3,300 residential units, 400,000 square feet of commercial, and 50,000 square feet of office uses. And based on the conversion factor of the land use equivalency matrix, the proposal increases the number of single family units in 971 units and the townhome type in 30 units, in detrimental of, of the other residential product types and especially of the commercial entitlements that are reduced to the amount of 260,000 square feet, that is the minimum allowed in the land use equivalency matrix, and the office uses are reduced to uh, 35,000 feet, uh, that is very close to the minimum allowed in the land use equivalency matrix. The net increment of the 101 dwelling units is assigned to parcel C6, that it is located south of EE Road, let me show you, and uh, to the east of the DRI. No changes are proposed to the location of the commercial parcels A1 and A2, south of Moccasin Wallow Road at the intersection with Carter Road. The applicant prepared a trip generation comparison showing that the trips generated by the new balance of residential product types and commercial entitlements do not exceed the approved trips for the currently approved GDP and no changes to traffic mitigation are required. The school concurrence analysis prepared by Manatee County School Districts confirms that adequate capacity is or will be in place to serve the project and also the review of other county agencies um, based on the, this review, water and sewer services will be available to uh, or are available. The proposed gross density is 3.1 dwelling units per acre for the entire DRI and the floor area ratio is 0.14 within the maximum gross density and floor area ratio allowed in the mixed use future land use category. So these are the other requirements, the removal of the north central overlay that is uh, consistent with the approval of the board in 2022, the increase of the maximum height of commercial buildings from 30 feet to stories to 40 feet, three stories, and when adjacent to residential uses, the projects are complying with the section 301.5 building height compatibility. Uh, uh, their proposal is to reduce, and the applicant has covered this part, the buffer width uh, adjacent to the surfers, and also there are 
some changes in, to the, in the access. Uh, based on the analysis of the proposal presented in the staff report, staff finds the request to be consistent with the policies of the comprehensive plan and the applicable requirements of the land development code with the proposed stipulations. Um, compliance with these requirements and all applicable standards of the land development code and the comprehensive plan <coughs> will be reviewed in detail at time of the preliminary site plan, final site plan applications. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions for staff at this point? Yes, sir. Mr. No? Yeah. No? Anything? Thank you. We will now open the public hearing on this project. Is there anyone in the public that would like to come forward and speak for or against this item? Anyone in the public that would like to come forward and speak for or against this item? Seeing no one come forward, we'll close the public hearing. Staff closing comments? Any? None? Applicant closing comments? Good morning, Mr. Grimes. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Caleb Grimes with Grimes Galvano, and I have been sworn. I just wanted to, a couple of very minor points. Uh, appreciate everything you've said. As you can see, it's a very minor change. It's a change based on what was uh, envisioned in doing the DRI. It's why we do equivalency matrices and, and set it up so we can make these kind of exchanges. Uh, it was approved almost eight years ago, and, <laughs> and markets change, as uh, you pointed out. Uh, but I, I just wanted to, to make one comment. It, there was a table that was uh, referenced that showed the number of units in each section in C6, C5, C4, C3. We have confirmed with staff and we've reviewed our code that, that it, is, it is acceptable to make adjustments within there without uh, changing the total numbers and uh, and that is something that is normally done, done administratively and reviewed at uh, FSP time. So just wanted you to know that as, as it goes forward, a development of that size, you make your best guesses on those little sections and they will be adjusted. Uh, other than that, uh, appreciate it, uh, uh, your approval of it, a recommendation of approval. Mr. Thank Grimes, you. I do have a question. There's a, there's a school site shown on the southwest corner it doesn't look like there's any access from Sawgrass to that school site. Is the school site just going to take access off of Erie, or do we know? The, the answer to that is that uh, we are actually working with staff uh, for an, no, you, you talk, he's talking about the oh. off-site school site. Yeah, on the southwest corner? I would think the school district would rather enter off of Sawgrass, not on Erie, but I'm, it's just a question. Oh, what, are you talking about here? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> this future school? Yes. Yes, that's off of uh, Carter, not Sawgrass. I mean Carter. I apologize. Yes. Okay. So, yes, Carter, I apologize. Yes. So, uh, we are actually working with staff right now to uh, expedite the construction of Carter Road to have that as a, a new good reliever road uh, north-south. And as part of that, uh, we have, you can see something shaded here that talks about changing of access points <laughs> would, be a, would be allowed. And the reason for that is we are, they, we are working with staff to actually at this point put a roundabout in that would give access to the school site, to us, and, and be a very good way to, to move the traffic at that point. Uh, so that will actually, the, an agreement on that will be coming back before you in the future, but you have pointed something out that is uh, very accurate and which we are working closely with. But you don't need another entrance point because if it's not shown here, you won't get another one, right? So you're okay with just those two in that southwest corner? Uh, the, 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 answer, the answer to that is that uh, as we work with staff we're going to have to adjust the access points mm -hmm. we know that you have enough of them so. and we have a provision in here that uh with approval of the county engineer that the number of access points can be adjusted on sawgrass or carter but not out on Marcus and Waller Rice. So good. you're okay. all good points and ones that we have been working very closely with staff on. All right, my final question is on, on Sawgrass, where it pres presently keeps going in dead ends, is that just a little stick of county right-of-way that sticks up in there? 
I'm not sure where you're talking about, north or south. If, it, if sawgrass goes north and it just kind of dead ends up there. That right black, here? No, no, the black line. The black line. Kind of oh, goes, that black line? Yeah. That's not sawgrass. Sawgrass is the white line. So what's the black line mean? I can answer that for staff if you like. <laughs> okay. There is an existing road there now, and that's where it is, but it will be realigned. Okay, and it'll yes. be, so that right away will get vacated, given back to them most likely. Yes, if it is actual right away. I, I don't know what it, it is. It's yeah, it may, it, black line. I'm not sure if it's actual right away or not, but, road there, but yes, it is a road there, and it will be realigned. Yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. And then also, just as early as yesterday, I had a meeting with the county engineer regarding Carter and the access to the school okay. to be completely transparent. They may have two access points onto Carter. The school might. The school yeah, might. That's why I'm asking, do you have enough black arrows shown? And yes. I'm, you, I'm told we do. So the, the, to better, as you can see, Carter is planned to extend along the property line of that, so they will have access to it. They would be coming in with their own mm -hmm. zoning yeah, issues. Just, I didn't want you running into problem because there's well, no black we, arrow showed there, and then <laughs> you come in and someone down the line says, anyway, you get the point. So, all right, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Grimes, that's all I have. It is a good point, and it is one that we were concerned with and have actually been working with uh, staff, Ms. Greer, with it, and uh, to assure that, and, and from a practical standpoint, the, the agreements on what we're trying to do with Carter Road to advance it, it's actually going to come back before the board anyway, so. Okay. All right. Anything else for the applicant? Thank you. We have a motion to approve and a second. Everyone may now vote. Motion passes unanimously, four to nothing, for approval. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> item number four, if staff would please read item number four into the record. Item number four, PDR 2313ZP, East, East Lynn 411 Rye Road Holdings, LLC, 411 Rye, Holding, Rye Road Holdings, LLC, <laughs> Donald and Linda Temple, Donald, Donna King, Donna King and Sharon Lanier, I may have just totally messed that name up, sorry. Uh, Weekly Homes LLC is the contract purchaser, and this is quasi-judicial. Rosina Leiter is here um, for planning. It is a rezone of approximately 25 acres, generally located on the southeast side of Rye Road, approximately 1.25 miles from the intersection of State Road 64 and Rye Road. All right, any planning commissioners have any ex parte communications that they need to reveal at this time? Yes, sir. Thank you. We have the applicant here. Good morning, Mr. Rudisill. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. For the record, I'm Scott Rudisill. I have been sworn, and I'm here on behalf of the applicant, uh, David Weekly Holmes. And with me today, I've got uh, Clint Cuffle, our project engineer, uh, David Jay with uh, David Weekly Holmes, and Steve Henry, our, our traffic engineer on the project. Uh, this is an aerial showing the location of the site. Uh, as was mentioned, it's on the east side of Rye Road, just north of State Road 64. Uh, the project is approximately 25 acres, um, and you can see it. the area around the site has been transitioning into predominantly single-family residential development. Our request is to rezone from A to PDR with a preliminary site plan. Uh, for 75 single-family lots. This entire area of the county is designated UF3 on the future land use map, and so the request is in line with the maximum density allowed in that category, um, as well as with the density that's been approved on other projects in that area. Uh, you can see we have ponds and floodplain compensation area and a 15-foot perimeter buffer uh, surrounding the lots, which provides for good separation. Um, we do have two specific approval requests on the project. Uh, the first is to allow for a 10-foot secondary front yard. And uh, the second request relates to the, um, the agricultural setback. There's not currently any active agricultural adjacent to the site. 
we do have a provision in there that if there is active agriculture um, at final site plan that in lieu of the 35 foot setback we would provide a 25 foot wide landscape buffer with fencing this is a zoning map as was mentioned uh, this site's currently zoned a and you can see um, the PDR surrounding the site um, and this project is right in line with those development trends and with that I'm going to turn it over to Clint to get into the project design details thanks Scott uh, again Clint Cuffle with WRA engineering and I have been sworn uh, I'll go through the, the site details here um, as you said 75 75 single-family detached lots um, with the open space being required at 25%, we're showing a little over 30% open space. Um, we, did have, we do have sidewalks proposed all along Rye Road. There is a school uh, just off the screen to the north. Um, so we are in, uh, in contact with the school board and making sure we have sidewalks in the front. Uh, we're within the future development area boundary uh, with utilities right out on, fr out on front on Rye Road. Um, and we're in the basin where we do have to have 50% reduction in de discharge for the stormwater. Um, so we'll be implementing that on this project. Um, here's a couple. Uh, David Weekly Homes is the home builder um, for this site. Um, here's a couple building elevations that they're um, proposing to, on this site. Um, so it's, it's a good product for the area. Uh, and it'll, it'll kind of match also the, the surrounding uh, development patterns. Um, and that's really the, the, the extent uh, of the design. And we're here to answer uh, any questions that you may have um, on the project. Thank you. Any questions? No, sir. Any questions for the applicant at this point? Are you proposing any kind of a tot lot or anything here, a gazebo or anything, or nothing at all? We, right, we haven't got into those details. We will have some kind of uh, down here on the other side. Actually, let me see if I can point. You see the area that's, that's where the road, in, the road curves and there's a bunch of green space there? Mm -hmm. We haven't decided exactly what's going to go there. We have a lift station next to it, but um, we will be proposing... And we also have a green space up, as you see, we're around the cul-de-sac. Um, we have a green space there. We haven't decided, you know, it could be a tot lot, could be a gazebo that surrounds that pond. I, I would recommend if this goes on to the county commission, you might address that, just say future, possible, whatever there. So I don't, the question doesn't get raised. Gotcha. Thank Anything you. Anything else for the applicant at this point? Yes, sir. Staff presentation. The applicant covered the majority of the aspects. The site is located with the US tree, and is, uh, the proposal is with the trends in the area. To the north is an existing subdivision, and not immediately adjacent to the east, there is another subdivision. But uh, the site is surrounded by A properties. The applicant did a very good job. You, they provide at, along the main. I don't, I don't know if I can use your presentation to explain uh, the site plan. They are proposing 30% open space. And uh, can you go to the site plan, Jenny? Please. Okay. Along to the frontage, they have um, stormwater uh, facilities as long to the east to the west, and to the south, they have another uh, um, big stone water pump, and the floodplain compensation going to be a kind of focal point is what is pointed in the staff report. We don't know uh, what amenity they're going to propose, but at least they, they pointed in the side that they're going to have a focal point that people probably can walk around. The lots are a little bigger to the trends right now in the area because the minimum lot is 5,100 and the maximum is 6,000. And they have the provision along to the, I guess this, to the east with the property that they have the buffer 15 feet plus 10 additional feet if it's a time of an asset plan, any agriculture activities over there. We don't have any concerns and we think that is providing more than the regular um, subdivision that we are having in the last few months. I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, any questions for staff at this point? Yes, sir. Ms. Schenk, good morning. Yes, sorry, Mr. Chair. The transportation stipulations, all legal review indicated they should be deleted. 
through D5. These are notes that could be on a site plan or their code requirements. We don't normally include those as stipulations. Staff, you're aware of that change? Yes, that is correct. I'm going to be deleted from um, the staff report for the board. Okay. Applicant, you heard that? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. All right, we'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that would like to come forward and speak for or against this item? Please come forward, state your name, whether or not you've been sworn, and your county residence. Hello, my name's Jeff Prater. I'm a resident of Mantee County. <clears throat> I live at 15255 Waterline Road. I have been sworn in. Why well, I'm before you today is because this property, if somebody wants to go ahead and put back up the, uh, the plat. Get the site plan back up? My property backs up to this property. I'm not here to, uh, I'm not against the development of it. I'm just here to point out some facts that need to be addressed by you all before they do it, and specifically the drainage. Um, I've got photo presentation here, and um, I can, I'm easier to talk about it with pictures than I am so I can support it. How do I do this? Do you want me to well, you, you, lay it the down best, Yeah, the best way is to lay it there. Any, anything that you present to us today has to stay with us. That's it, fine. It, it I would, got it. it. Okay. Sure. Let's do it one at a time. Uh, let's see. Okay. So this is my front yard right now. Not right as we speak, but this was the December rain we just went through. If you all remember, we had a pretty good downpour. So you can see across the road. Now, this is Waterline Road. They're, they're proposed behind me. But when you develop, you all understand that we need somewhere for this water to absorb. What I see right now is a Mill Creek watershed isn't able to handle any more runoff unless something is proposed or done to it before any more development takes place in this area. Here's proof. I mean, you can't, I don't know if I'm the only one that has that issue. And I do come because the people around me are moving away from this because of the development that's going on. The second picture is a land that backs up to it also, which is 10 acres right beside mine. And you can see how that water is retained there. Now, when I've, I've just built this home in 2021, my home, and I did build it up, build it up to the standards of what the county requires. But until the hurricanes came in the last couple of years, did I realize that the amount of water that comes down that road, water lines is a real good name for it because that's what it is. But then again, if you're going to build a new development right behind me, that water's got to go somewhere. Now, they, they do have the retention ponds, okay? But water seeks its slowest point. So if their ponds have water in it so to the depth of my land, guess where it's going to come? Back over on my land. The second thing is the amount of traffic flow that is there now. So they propose 75 homes. That's probably another 150 cars you're adding to the area. You would assume most homes have two cars today. It right when I leave my home and turn onto Rye Road off of Waterline Road, I take my life in my own hands daily. There's nothing but a stop sign there. So I know I'm done. Anything to, anything to finish up or? Well, the rest of my photos and stuff, and I didn't, this is my first time ever coming before you. So I went back, I understand the comprehensive plan. I'm a real estate broker. I came from the mining from West Virginia, so I understand the environment and stuff. So the rest of my picture are the animals that live on that land, such as these deer, the turkey. It's being shoved out. We even have a panther within 10 mile radius of us now. I have a photo of it, because I have a friend that had a trail camp that picked it up. But it was also announced in the news last week, so you know I'm not just coming off of this. The last thing I want to say, the development that's going on, I hate when they clear cut it. I have photos of these dust storms that are created when you all clear cut that. And one way to prevent that is two ways. You've got to have plenty of water trucks around because I know I've had to deal with that personally in my blast profession. But another way is to drill a well 
and they had some water lines out there to keep these things damp when they're doing it because I know that they're take that away. It's going to blow onto my property, which I have open pools, open lanai's. I'm done. If, if the, the things you showed us will have to stay here. I, I fine. I'll give it to you. I prepared a whole speech. I just didn't know what was going to go on, how long I had. Well, they will be available to you at the county commission meeting. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to come forward and speak for or against this? Item. Anyone else in the public would like to come forward to speak for or against this item? Seeing no one come forward, we'll close the public hearing. Staff closing comments. No, no comments from staff? No. Applicant closing comments, and I'm sure you're going to want to talk about traffic and storm. Yes, th thank you uh, again. Clint Cuffle with WRA Engineering. I am a professional engineer, and I have been sworn. Um, so, yes, this site does have floodplain, um, and we have a uh, county has supplied a Mill Creek watershed study to us. It's actually a 2D study, which is very tough to deal with, but we, we have been working on that, working with that. And like I said, uh, one of the one of the key points I mentioned is we have to we have to do 50% reduction in peak discharge from our site. Okay. So with with this site, we are putting this into the Mill Creek watershed uh, model. Uh, we'll be we'll be representing this to the county that our site is not having having any adverse impact, and in fact, we'll have to show that we're actually improving the general area of where the water leaves our site. Um, the site plan that I showed. Um, where is the outfall? The outfall, there's actually a little creek system that comes up through here. That's what separated that floodplain comp area. I could show you. Okay. I'm going to pull up my presentation. Where the creek system comes up through here and comes in and leaves. There's actually a cross culvert of Rye Road right here. Okay. So that's why you see this floodplain compensation on the other side of the creek system because we're filling in part of it on the north side. This whole area down here is for floodplain compensation. Does to, it drain to the north? It, yeah, drains to the north. It drains to the north. Your property drains to the north. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, we will be supplying all this very detailed information. Um, we've gotten through it uh, pretty detailed so far. Okay. Um, and we're showing that the site the site will work as, as it's designed and meet the county's requirements, swift mud requirements okay. for the stormwater. When this is over, it might be good for you to get with the gentleman and explain yeah. what the 50% reduction in floodplain, floodplain comp, and those kind of things. So he has a little, you know, he's up to speed yeah. when he speaks in front of the board or has better knowledge about yeah, what Yeah, I'll get his information and talk to him for sure. Okay. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Could you, uh, for the record, just speak to any off-site runoff that comes onto your site and how you must address it? Yes. So we have um, from the, be from the south, we do have stormwater runoff that does come across, you know, through this ditch system, and so we are not touching the ditch system, keeping it natural, keeping it as is, and then, like I said, we're filling in the north side of it is where there's floodplain, and then compensating on the south side. Um, but any any off-site runoff that comes on our site, we're either routing it around it, around our site, um, or incorporating it into the site plan. That's why you see the break of the lots, and the, uh, we're keeping that all natural. Okay. All right, any other questions for Storm? Um, let's talk about traffic for a moment. Uh, Steve Henry Links is here to discuss traffic. Good morning, Steve Henry Links and Associates. We did the traffic analysis for the project. And for this one, we did a, a traffic impact statement, which is just kind of a snapshot in time um, of, of the conditions. But what we'll do is a part of the FSP, we'll have to do a detailed traffic analysis for it to look at from a concurrency standpoint. And then we'll also have to do an operational analysis to look at the access and to figure out what turn lanes and what operational improvements may be necessary to be able to allow the project to operate acceptable level of service. Yeah, because right now I don't, there, there's no turn lanes proposed, but when you do the um, analysis, it will determine if you do need to add a turn lane or whatever. Correct. You'll just have to modify pond one and pond four as necessary to Absolutely. accomplish it. But whatever we need to do to be able to provide those turn lanes as necessary for the operational analysis. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for staff and or applicant? Mr. Rudisill, any closing comments? No? Chair, I'll entertain a motion.
<coughs> Mr. Chair, we also be the motion with the alternative stipulations de deleted. Stipulations D1 through D5 would be deleted. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. DeLesline, which takes into account your changes to the stipulations. Yes. We are looking for a second. We have a second. All those in, uh, we may go ahead and vote now. I used to have to say that. I don't have to anymore. Motion to approve passes four to nothing, I'm four to zero. Uh, sir, I encourage you to get with the um, the engineer, the engineer out, outside and, and uh, let him give you some. All right, thank you. All right, last item. All right, is there one more? Staff? I said that, didn't I? Item number five? Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Item number five. LDC T 2317, Ordinance 24-02, County Initiated Land Development Code Text Amendment, Electric Vehicle Charging Stations. It's quasi-judicial, and Charles Andrews is here for staff. Hi, good morning. Charles Andrews with staff, and actually I have not been sworn. It's legislative. Oh, I don't need, oh, it's a quasi-judicial. Oh, oh, sorry, never mind. Oh. Charles Andrews haven't been sworn, but I'm okay. <laughs> so let me get the uh, staff report up real quick. It is quasi-judicial. I mean the uh, presentation, excuse me. Need more coffee this morning. Okay, so before you, we have a land development code text amendment. This is for EV electric vehicle charging stations. And I'm gonna run through a brief presentation on that. So what exactly is happening? So in Florida right now, uh, we are the, the second in the US for EV registration, just at over 58,000 registered vehicles. In Manatee County, we currently have 20 EV charging stations or 52 charging ports. That's one port per car. And you'll see the outline there in the yellow. So we're the second, uh, the California's first. Uh, let's see. So why the need to evolve? So in looking, uh, going through and, and doing some research on this, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> uh, motor vehicle manufacturers are looking to go full electric by certain uh, deadlines, 2030, for example, and GM, um, you know, et cetera. And then others have evolved through this. So we have uh, several examples up here in the presentation, such as Orlando, City of Miami Beach, uh, Coral Gables, uh, providing regulations for electric vehicle infrastructure and requirements. So a background here, uh, market projections show, whoops, there you go. Market projections, projections show by 2030 that at least 30% of registered vehicles will be, will be powered by electric. So this text amendment is being proposed to address the growing trend in electric vehicle operation and utilization uh, to meet that demand. Uh, overview on the changes, chapter two, we're providing some definitions to establish electric vehicles and related infrastructure uh, into the LDC or Land Development Code. And these are the uh, definitions we're looking at doing. They're part of your packet. Uh, you'll notice two definitions I've highlighted. Uh, one is EV capable, which talks about parking spaces that would prepare for the future installation of electric vehicle supply equipment or EVSE by providing a dedicated conduit to the EV space. And then the EVSE, sorry, acronyms here, electric vehicle supply equipment, it basically means a unit of fueling infrastructure that supplies electric energy for the recharging of electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, electric via, uh, motorcycles, and fuel cell vehicles. Uh, the other change here is we're looking to chapter 10, which is transportation management. Uh, this is addressing the number of vehicle parking spaces required. It provide clarification. There, there's one note that we did find. Uh, we're providing a reference for required handicap parking spaces that kind of came up just as a little cleanup here as part of this text amendment. Uh, the main item here is 1005.3, which speaks to the number of vehicular parking spaces uh, that's required. We're providing a section E for that to provide minimum development standards. And then uh, in addition to that, we also have um, providing the minimum parking spaces, uh, spaces table 10-3.1 uh, regarding this proposal. And then chapter 10 here, we've got a, a layout here of, of what we're looking at. Uh, for 2% for different uh, land uses and everything. And this is, this is meant more for 
uh, medium, larger scale development, not, not the little guys, so to speak. So you'll look at community services here. And this was uh, reviewed against our table 10-2, which speaks to the different land uses and, and looking at um, the 2%. And that 2% came from the other jurisdictions here. I'm gonna go back real quick. Across here, you'll see the highlighting here with the different cities that have implemented this, uh, these requirements here at 2% for parking spaces would be set up for these. Um, and then, like I said, we just kind of looked at table 10-2 with the different uses under each land use category and then provided those where they begin at that threshold. So um, the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the land development code. And we're looking at, um, I guess, transmittal or approval here of the, the text amendment going forward, the uh, Board of County Commissioners. And I'm, I'm here if you have any questions. Any questions for the staff? Yes. Mr. Chair, Ms. I, I just want to point out, just for, if, for your information, I know you're just voting for consistency with the current plan, but I'll be telling the board there are a number of proposed bills for Florida legislature that expressly preempt the regulation of EV charging stations to the state, and they also have a different definition for electrical vehicles than what we use here. And it's impossible at this point with a moving target, three or four or five different bills pending, whether we can say at this point whether they're going to be preempted or not. So I'll just tell the board they have an option of waiting to see if the state does, or if they adopt this, they might have to amend or repeal it later. It's just FYI. Mr. Leslie. Nothing. Um, I mean, what, I, I get the sense of government overreach here, telling me what kind of parking spaces I need to do and put in conduit and all of that. If the people who come to my shopping center don't come to my shopping center because there's no place to charge their cars, then they won't come to my shopping center. That's none of the government's business. So that's probably why people up in Tallahassee are thinking, well, that sounds like government overreach to me telling me what I got to do for my parking stations. So I'm probably going to be opposed to this just because I'm opposed to government overreach all the time. So it's none of, your, none of the government's business if I put in electric charging stations or not. I think that applies to parking too. Like developers are going to put in the appropriate amount of parking, not too much, not too little. I mean, it's the same kind of thing to me is... And we do have regulations on number of parking spaces, but you're not going to under park because same reason. So I, I'm okay with this. Well, I'm okay with requiring parking spaces. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay with requiring the conduit, requiring this, requiring that, requiring a certain number of parking spaces for EV. Mm -hmm. Next week it'll be a certain number of parking spaces for pickup trucks and then a certain number of parking spaces for vans and it's none of the government's business. Uh, do, do they tell me that for my parking my parking lot, I need to have a gas station so that if I pull in and I need gas, I can have a gas station every parking lot? No. So I'm, I'm just, it, it <clears throat> smells a little bit of government overreach to me, um, which I just going to fight against every chance I can. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? And if I may, Chairman, uh, Charles Andrews, again, for the record, uh, I do have the definitions uh, put up here. And, and the reason behind this text amendment, in addition to being kind of proactive of where we're going with market trends and whatnot, is that by providing, th there's different ways of doing this. So you could do EV capable, which is just laying the conduit. So once, the, once you're developing the site, and this does not apply to redevelopment. So I'll be crystal clear on that. So this is all new development, reaching certain thresholds, you know, 250 or 50 under certain land uses. But the idea is to save money for the developer long term. And what that means is if you have the conduit laid in and you have 2%, whatever that may be, maybe it's 100 spaces, so you have two spaces, for example, it would just be flagged EV capable. So down the road, if they want to, they don't have to tear up a half a million or whatever it may cost to rip up part of that parking uh, infrastructure and run a line to provide for that. But isn't that their business? Mm -hmm. That's their business, not your business. Are you going to pay? Are you going to pay them to put those pipes in? Are you going to reimburse them for that cost since you want it and they don't? No. And there's we're one great gonna example. To, we're going to agree to disagree, and I'm going to fight against government overreach, and we'll see what happens. Okay. And one, one final point, Chairman, if I may, is um, uh, Ellington Outlet Malls has a number of those spaces, and when people do park there, if they choose to go there and, and utilize that facility, they go over, they're charging, and they're using the, the site. They're, they're, using, they're, they're conducting business on site with that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's and, one thing. Can I can kind of serve as an attractor? Was that because of government telling them to do that, or did they do that? 
I think they, they perceive it as a luxury that I can go to that shop and they, charge my car for free. So, or, so the market, I don't even know if they the charge. provided that, not yeah. the government. I agree. Yeah. I understand. All right. Um, Chairman and Tatum, a motion one way or the other? We have a motion to approve. Ms. Keba made a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? It appears the motion to approve is going to fail for lack of second. Do we have a motion to? Well, I don't. Do we deny or we just don't? What do we do, Ms. Shank? Technically, just don't pass it through. Motion deny. There it is. Sorry, I was trying to get. We have a motion by Minister Delesling. Do we have a second? Second by Ms. Prosser. All those in, you may vote now. The motion to deny um, passes three to one. I believe that's the end of our of our official meeting. Is there any closing comments from any planning commissioners? Staff closing comments? County attorney? Nothing. County engineer. All right, the over-under, sorry. We are now adjourned.